Welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel. And today we're going to talk about black and white images. And more specifically, I've invited our regular contributor, Alex Mustard, to share some of his favorite black and white images and also to discuss a little bit about what makes for a great black and white image and why and how we should go about trying to create black and white images when we're shooting underwater. So without any further nonsense from me, I'll pass you straight on to Alex. Thanks, Adam. I, th I thought I'd start by just talking a little bit about why black and white photography is so important and so valuable to underwater photographers. And obviously the very first underwater photos, William Thompson and then Louis Boutin, they were all black and white images. And black and white has, has continued from then forwards because it's very suited to underwater photography, particularly available light, wide angle underwater photography, but it can be used across underwater photography to create really startling pictures. And one of the main reasons for this is a technical one in that the underwater world is, is very low contrast and black and white photography is a great way of boosting that contrast, giving our images impact, allowing subjects to pop out of the murk. So it's always been really important for that, but we shouldn't just use it for problem solving. So I think the main thing that I would say when you want to create black and white pictures is, is know how to convert your files. On WetPixel Live, we're generally not wanting to focus much on image processing. I know Adam and I would both really recommend going and checking out the Go Ask Erin online webinars um, and tutorials about various aspects of processing underwater pictures. I think she's got several up there about processing black and white. I remember there was one um, sort of amusingly titled sort of 60,000 um, shades of gray or something, which was about black and white photography, but well worth, worth checking out to, to learn how to get the most out of the conversions. But I think great black and white photography starts by thinking in black and white when you're approaching your subjects. And that's really about reading and using the light well, I think is really important. Typically, black and white underwater photos, to simplify it right down, are going to work well when your subject is a different tone to your background. And typically in underwater, we're either going to go for a very dark black background and have nice light subjects on there, or we're going to have a very white background and have sort of medium or dark subjects on that and both of those approaches work well underwater when you're shooting you need to be thinking in those terms to help get the exposures right if you're going to end up going for a light background you probably want a nice bright exposure of that background in the picture if you're going to go for a dark background you're probably going to want to start with a nice dark exposure in the background to make the processing relatively easily easy um, beyond that i don't really want to say too much more about the techniques of it but i'll show you some pictures and you'll see they sort of fall into those those two categories so the, the first picture is, is a well-known current picture of mine. Typically, when Adam asks me to pick these favorites, I like to dive back into my history and not necessarily pick the most obvious choices. But the first picture here is a, a picture that's um, School of Jacks that was awarded in the most recent Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. Um, this School of Jacks is a school of, of big-eyed jacks taken in the Red Sea. Um, and they're creating this lovely spiral, which is what makes the visual impact. This is a picture taken shooting down on the jacks, which made it very easy to have the nice silvery bodies of the jacks, catching the sunlight, catching my strobe light, and then the very deep water behind them was a very dark blue in the original picture, and therefore very well suited for just a very quick conversion into black and white and make this picture work. Yep. But this picture works for me as a black and white because it's just got that strong graphic, graphic shape yeah. dominating the picture. Yeah, yeah. And then there's lovely detail in it. And particularly if you see this picture in the Wildlife Photographer Exhibition in, in, in London, you know, when you see this picture really big, big all the detail captured by the D850 and the WACP lens I was using um, it, on each individual fish really comes through. And it's a picture that just sucks you in from a distance. It looks almost like an eyeball. And then as you get closer, you see the fish. And then as you get Breaks closer down. still, yeah, yeah. you can enjoy the detail of all the fish. But yeah. it's made by that strong graphic element. Yeah. Um, the next picture I was going to pull up is, is an oldie, um, and this is a picture of three stingrays taken at Stingray City in the Cayman Islands. Um, and this is actually the very first day I went there at dawn. Um, going there at dawn has, has become a big thing and a big part of my workshops. But I was introduced to going there at dawn by Guy Harvey, who's a um, not very well known on this side of the Atlantic, but on the other side of the Atlantic is a very well known marine biologist. Um, wildlife fish, artist, isn't he? Angler, yeah. and, and marine artist and yeah. marine conservationist. Yeah. And he's also a very, very nice, very generous man. And he invited me to go with him to the sandbar at dawn because he discovered it was a really amazing time to go there because no one went there. 
And this picture was taken more than 20 years ago on a Nikonos camera within a, um, a 15 mil lens, but was also taken on color film. I hadn't right. gone there with the intention of shooting black and whites. But when the light changes at the sandbar, and this picture was taken when it was cloudy, and when it's sunny, you get all the beautiful dancing light patterns on the seabed. But when it goes cloudy, all those patterns disappear. Yep. But the ripples on the seabed really show up in the picture. Yep. And what I realized is during the middle of this dive was that I had these amazing ripples on the seabed. And so I found a camera angle that made the most of these ripples and then waited to get some nice stingrays coming into the frame. And in this case here, I had these three stingrays swimming towards me Beautiful. with their shadows underneath. Yep. And with the 15 mil wide angle lens, it was a nice rectilinear wide view to capture the scene. And this picture was awarded in the Antibes Festival, which was the sort of the big or the biggest underwater photography festival back in those days yep. um, in France. Yep. Um, and yeah, so this picture was a winner there all those years ago. But it's remained a real favourite of mine. I think the image quality isn't you know isn't isn't great. I mean, although I mean it, it's perfectly uh, fine. I think the I texture, the texture. Yeah, and tranny and, and, and work it up the, the, the texture still looks great and i mean that's that's the thing with this image is, is you know the texture in the, in the in the ripples in the sand yeah I, they're still there so yeah it's great yeah and this is obviously this was this was shot on color film yeah and it converted in the computer into black and white and then it won a category as a print yeah uh, made from that so you know people often say well photoshop that's a, a new thing you know photoshop's what 35, 40 years old yeah, now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I think there's very, very few people in underwater photography who really, really were taking underwater photos before Photoshop. Yeah. Um, and this was using Photoshop to make a black and white conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in those early days. Right. Um, next up, I'm going to show um, a classic turtle shot. And one of my favorite angles for shooting turtles, particularly green turtles like this one, is this top down view when you have a nice young green turtle. They'll typically Clean have shell. very, very nice shell patterns on yeah. the back. Yeah. So when I see a green turtle, I'll often look for this top-down view on them. It's, a, it's an angle that turtles are also quite relaxed about. They're very well protected from the top of their thick shell. Yeah. So they'll, 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 even a nervous turtle will allow you to swim very close to it from above. Yeah. And this picture here shooting down on it, putting strobe light on the turtle shell, a little bit of strobe light, but mainly the sunlight on the turtle shell and then the deep blue water below really lent itself to a black-and-white conversion. Yeah. I think my motivation for converting this shot was actually that lots of photographers have done these top-down views of turtles. And actually, I just decided to make this one black and white just to stand out from what everyone else was doing. So this wasn't really a picture that I imagined when shooting it as black and white. But I think when I was looking through my files after the dive, I was going, it's very nice, but it's kind of like everyone else has done. Yeah. Why don't I try it as a black and white? And this particular shot just looked fantastic as a black and white. So it's it's always stayed as black and white. I think the colours and the shells as well, and the beautiful patterns in the shell, um, they actually are quite mimicked by the by the water tones as well. So by mm. separating them by by using black and white has helped as well. It really brings out the detail and the pattern in the shell, um, yeah. which, which which I think would get a bit lost otherwise. So yeah, yeah, lovely. yeah, yeah. I think the pattern looks re really really nice, and yeah. you know, it's you've just got the pattern coming through. There's no sun breaking it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next photo is I typically shoot a lot of my black and white pictures when there isn't sun yeah. um, or I don't want to have the sun patterns in the picture because generally the sun underwater by the time it's gone through the surface creates too much fine detail to look good as a black and white. Black and white pictures are about strong shape, strong form, yeah. big shadows, areas of detail. Yeah. But, you, but the, the, the sort of the, that detail is often obliterated by all the fine patterns of light yeah. in the yeah. Yeah. white. So I often shoot a lot of black and whites in flat light, either that I'm too deep for the sun to have strong effects or it wasn't particularly sunny conditions. And this is a picture that has got sun. Yeah. But I really like, this is a downward picture of a, a whale shark in Sri Lanka um, taken um, last year, so a relatively recent picture. And it's just a downward looking picture shot with a Nikonos RS 13 mil on the D850. And um, the, I like just how those beams of light draw your eye to the shark. Yeah. Personally, I think the, the whale shark's patterns would look better without the beams of light because the beams of light kind of obliterate the patterns. But yeah. I think the beams of light in this particular frame are worth it. Yeah, I think the way they wrap around the shark's beautiful. I mean, that, that, yeah. that, that's the, it, it's as much, it's as much the, the shape of the beams as it is the beams themselves, I think. Yeah. And I, I, this picture here is very much a pair picture with 
um, two of my other favorite black and whites, which aren't in this video, but are in, in that discussion we had um, a few weeks ago yeah. about my favorite shark pictures. Yeah. Both of those are black. There's two black and white pictures in there, oh, which are among my favorites. Yeah. And I love the contrast between this frame and the other. Yeah. One is a silhouette of a, of a whale shark looking up with beams. Yeah. And this is a silhouette of a, uh, this is a whale shark looking down with beams. So, um, so, so they're, they're really nice pair of images. So for those people that haven't seen them, those are in um, Alex's five favorite shark images video, which we, we posted a few weeks ago. So yeah, it's uh, up yeah. on YouTube. You can yeah, easily find it in the web yeah, yeah. Pixel live playlist. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is quite a nice contrast to that. Yep. Um, my final one of my five is this wreck picture here. Um, and wrecks definitely lend themselves to black and whites. I have so many favorite wreck pictures in black and white. Yeah. And I just chose this one here really because it's it's got the extra gloss of having a school of fish in as well. Yeah. And this was actually a picture. I was just on a fun dive on the wreck with my wife and a friend, I think, uh, a couple of friends. There's only a few of us diving on the wreck. And um, one of my friends, Damian Morik, had been doing some pictures of divers standing on the seabed around wrecks and i've been teasing him that you know divers don't stand they swim um and so i actually said right i want to take a picture to tease him with yeah. so i asked my friend um um in in the picture um to stand um on the seabed and and pose for my picture just to take the mickey out of Demia. And I was setting up the shot, and suddenly this school of fish fell into the frame. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this is probably my best ever chance on, on the bow of the kitty wake. So yeah. I'd set up the shot to look nice, and then this school of fish just swam into frame. And I had this amazing shot. And I would obviously – I'd prefer this shot if the diver was in that position but swimming. Yeah. But I, we had no time to read to change anything, and I just had to shoot it as it is. So I've always had this shot with the diver standing, which I, I don't mind the diver standing. They're standing on the seabed. It's a fun thing to do when you're diving sometimes is to stand up on a seabed and, and, and do things. So I don't have any problem with the fact the diver's standing. But it's actually purely by accident. It wasn't planned to be like that with this frame. Yeah. It was just when that school of, of horse eye jacks chime into frame, I suddenly realized I had the chance to take this amazing image and there was no chance to change, change the position of the, um, of, of the model. There's a trend about standing divers. Wasn't Brian scary? Hasn't he got some pictures of that diver standing on the bottom with a, yeah, you know? I think that's where <laughs> but, Damien got the idea from and I was just taking the mickey out of him about, yeah. I was like, yeah, we can all do this standing thing. Not <laughs> and now I've got this well-known picture with a standing diver in <laughs> and a, kind of a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then as always in these, I, I thought I'd cheat and add a, a sixth yeah, picture. Right. I um, but I, I thought I'd change, change tack very much. And this is a, the final picture is a swimming pool shot wow. of a model. And I think model photography in the pool is a really interesting area of underwater photography. It's not an area where I am any have any sort of expertise, but it's a type of underwater photography that's always fascinated me. Yeah. And I love looking at the work of the photographers who do exceptional model photography in the pool. Yeah. This was taken um, with um, on a shoot in Florida with, with Jeff Hartog, um, known as Loftus on, on the wet pixel forums. Um, and this was a, a, a shoot we did the day before joining a wet pixel shark charter out of West Palm beach. Yeah. And we did a day of model photography in the pool. Um, and I, I just, you know, it just brings back nice memories of doing that shoot, very different type of subject matter to shoot. This is no amazing model photo by anyone's stretch, but I thought it was nice to, to, to do that. And I think it'd be a good topic for you to maybe get some of these experts in this model photography on to yeah. some future wet pixel lives and have some discussions with them. Yeah, sure. I think it's a type of photography that I'd encourage any underwater photographer to have a go at. I think you learn a lot about light, about lighting, about using light when working in the pool and the restrictions that that gives you, but also the creative possibilities that it, it provides. So I thought it was a fun picture to show. And, from that and just, just to, so why black and white for this picture then, Alex? What? Um... Um, I, I think it really brought out the, um, the contrast. So we were working with a black background. So right. um, we set okay. out, set up out of pool lighting. Yeah. Um, so we had um, big studio lights out of the pool, lighting down from both sides to create a nice feeling of light under the water. And then we were lighting the model with those studio lights against the black background. Yeah. And we were mainly shooting in color. But I, I felt that the black and white really drew your eye to the simplicity of the shape of the model and then the shape of the reflection. Yeah. It's not a perfect shape. I'd, I'd much prefer a really lovely U on both. So you have this kind of very nice shape in the picture. But that's what I was, was going yeah. for with this picture. Yeah. It's actually very difficult for a model to, without a face mask, 
to look relaxed while touching their head back underwater. Yep. Um, so it's very, very good work um, from the model to create this particular pose. Yeah, it's spectacular. Um, but yeah, it was that was the idea we were going for. We, there was actually um, three of us shooting that day, and it was you know it was kind of more of a fun session to have a go at learning the techniques of this, which I was very keen to sort of learn about how it was done, yep. more so than trying to get finished pictures. Yep. But I thought it was a nice picture to include in, in this. Yeah, yeah, it's something completely different. It's lovely. Yeah, yep. great. Thank you, Alex. So if people go on to amuster.com, can they find your images if they search black and white or mono? Yeah, you can just type in black and white, actually, yeah. and all monochrome or yeah. mono, um, and it will bring them up. Obviously, um, yeah, um, and yeah, I try and tag most of them with that, and you can choose a very different favorite five, I'm sure. These yeah. are just the ones I thought I'd talk about today, which have got me nice memories attached to them. Well, and, and they're very spectacular, so thank you for sharing them. Um, we'll say goodbye to you now. Um, and um, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, um, and special thanks to Icolite for sponsoring this episode. Um, very much appreciated. Please um, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more um, of what we're doing here. Um, like the video if you enjoyed it, and please add suggestions for any future topics in the comments section below. Thanks very much, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.